Tillerson. It's about winding down, I believe. It was a little extended based on the timeline that we had gotten. Welcome also to our members of the media. This is a press conference. Let me just share with you the members of the cabinet who are here. We have several cabinet ministers. I see Minister Andrew Wheatley, uh, who just came down. Also, Minister Mike Henry, Minister Horace Chang, and the tourism minister, Ed Bartlett, as well as the ministers of state, Fabel Williams, Ruddy Spencer, and Colonel Charles Jr. Thank you so much for joining us here today, as well as, oh, Mr. Warmington, Everett Warmington, good afternoon to you, a special good afternoon to you too. Um, <laughs> our Attorney General is also here with us, Marlene Malahu Ford. The Cabinet Secretary, the erstwhile uh, Ambassador Saunders is here with us, as well as our Permanent Secretary, uh, the Permanent Secretary in two ministries, the Office of the Prime Minister and the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Mrs. Audrey Sewell is here. The Finance and Planning Minister, Audley Shaw, joins us as well. So you can bet then we're about to start soon. So may I invite those members of the media to uh, just get your equipment ready. This will be a, well, let's see. Let's play by air. But this really should be a, a, a brief uh, press briefing with some questions as well. Uh, let me continue because we also have with us the Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Rocky Mead, as well as the Commissioner of Police Acting, DCP uh, Clifford Blake. And we have other Permanent Secretaries. I see Permanent Secretary Alexander and Permanent Secretary McIntosh here, as well as uh, the head of the PIOJ, Dr. Wayne Henry, and uh, I keep saying DBJ. DVJ, Milverton Reynolds, the National Security Advisor, also joins us this afternoon. Now, before we begin, may I invite everyone to turn their phones on the off, silent, or vibrate positions for me, please. Whichever one you choose, just we don't want to hear it ringing because this will be a very brief, uh, pardon me? Governor Winter, Governor Winter, Governor Winter. Governor Winter, good afternoon to you too. All right, thank you so much for joining us here this afternoon. I believe the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will join us as well. Ambassador Marcia Gilbert Roberts, as well as the Foreign Affairs Minister will join us. Our visiting delegation, the Honorable Rex Tillerson, the US Secretary of State, and He'll be joined later on by Mr. Eric Kant, the charge d'affaires of the U.S. Embassy in Kingston, and other members of the delegation. Ambassador Nigel Clark will also join us for this press briefing. So again, the first rule, if you could, please turn your phones on the off, silent, or vibrate positions. Once the Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, and the U.S. Secretary of State take to the podium and after their opening remarks we'll take some questions. May I invite then members of the media to raise their hands. I will identify you. When you are identified may I ask you to identify yourself to everyone. If you would stand since we have the cameras around they would be able to see you. Identify yourself and your media entity and given the very limited time, may I ask that you ask your question as succinctly as possible, and I would want to restrict uh, to one question per person. Uh, I don't believe we'll have enough time for too many follow-ups as well. So once that is done, then I think we'll have a fantastic little event here today, a press conference. So thank you so much. We will begin momentarily, and may I invite you again to bear with us as uh, the leaders uh, have their final discussions before emerging.
since yesterday was Bob Marley's birthday, if anyone has a Bob Marley to play on their phone, then you may do so. <laughs> or since we have some visitors, um, any Eagles fan, you may want to play an Eagles song uh, <laughs> for those who are uh, Super Bowl inclined. But uh, so the meeting is finished and we're now just uh, formally awaiting uh, the Prime Minister and Secretary Tillerson to come down.
Good afternoon once again, ladies and gentlemen. Please stand. The Prime Minister of Jamaica, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, as well as the U.S. Secretary of State, the Honorable Rex Tillerson. You may be seated. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone, in this working visit of the U.S. Secretary of State to Jamaica. The Prime Minister will make some remarks, followed by Secretary Tillerson. Prime Minister. Members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It was my great pleasure to welcome Secretary of State Tillerson to Jamaica and to host him and his delegation on this brief but historic working visit to Jamaica. Secretary Tillerson and I have engaged in critical discussions on issues of mutual interest to Jamaica and the United States, as well as the region, with a focus on promoting a peaceful, prosperous, energy secure, and democratic hemisphere. Among the specific matters discussed were strengthening security cooperation in order to more effectively combat transnational organized crime, boosting the U.S.-Jamaica economic partnership, exploring opportunities to broaden U.S. CARICOM engagement, energy security, the economic vulnerability of middle-income countries, including climatic events, de-risking and correspondent banking issues, and of course the situation in Venezuela. Our talks reflected Jamaica's long and productive relationship with the United States and signaled the importance of the strong and vibrant partnership that exists between our two countries. I highlighted the common values we share based on our geographic proximity, our strong historical and cultural ties, our robust trade, tourism, and investment relations. Our large Jamaican diaspora in the USA and our strong record of people-to-people -people contacts at all levels. I expressed gratitude on behalf of the government and people of Jamaica for their high levels of support provided by the United States to Jamaica over the years, especially in the areas which have assisted in meeting our national development goals. In particular, we have greatly valued America's efforts to disrupt transnational crime through continued support to effectively secure Jamaica's maritime space. We agreed to deepen our cooperation in this regard, acknowledging also that the sharing and exchange of intelligence is critical to safely is critical to the safety and security of our two countries and the wider region. With respect to our economic partnership, Secretary Tillerson and I both agreed that the transformation of Jamaica's energy sector is critical to the achievement of our development objectives, including resilience. I express the hope that the U.S. will continue to support our thrust towards energy independence in the region, including greater efficiency in energy use and greater incorporation of renewable energy sources. I express the hope that the United States will strengthen its economic partnerships and participation in the region in the interest of our respective countries and peoples. Additionally, we use the opportunity to discuss diaspora matters and the invaluable contribution of Jamaicans resident in the United States, including those engaged in service sectors of critical importance to the United States economy. Secretary Tillerson reiterated the concern of the U.S. government on the political and economic crisis in Venezuela and the impact on the most vulnerable. We both agreed 
that positive engagement between the government and the opposition in Venezuela is essential and expressed regret that the attempts of the OAS to promote dialogue have not been met with success. At the conclusion of our meeting, we agreed that the government of Venezuela must act in the best interest of its people and that it should ensure that the presidential elections are free, fair, and credible in the eyes of the Venezuelan people and the international community. Secretary Tillerson, I thank you for visiting Jamaica today as we work towards a shared vision of peaceful, prosperous, energy secure, and a democratic hemisphere. I thank you for the frank and candid dialogue and the spirit of cooperation which have made our talks constructive and fruitful. I look forward to continuing the vibrant partnership enjoyed between Jamaica and the United States in the years ahead. I thank you. Well, first let me begin by thanking the Prime Minister for a very warm welcome to Jamaica and for the hospitality shown to myself and my delegation. This is Indeed, my first visit to Jamaica, although I shared with him, some of my family members have been here. I think they have more vacation days than I do. <laughs> but uh, indeed, it really is a pleasure to be here and, as the Prime Minister indicated, to have a very, very far-reaching, comprehensive discussion and exchange on important issues to both of our countries, but also to take note of the strong record of cooperation that exists between the United States and Jamaica. And as most of you know, this is the concluding stop on a trip that I've taken throughout Latin America and the Caribbean. And this stop, I think, is, is important because the, Jamaica is our closest partner in this region. The United States understands the importance of that our security and prosperity are very closely tied to that of our Caribbean neighbors. And we're glad to have the partner we have in Jamaica. And I noted uh, that the Prime Minister is, is assuming the chairmanship of CARICOM, and so I think it made our discussions even that much more timely and useful. Because we did speak about the region uh, more uh, broadly as well, beyond just uh, Jamaica and the U.S. relations. We did talk about several aspects of the U.S.-Jamaica bilateral relationship, and our view is of the outsized role that Jamaica does play in the region as a leader uh, to other countries uh, here in the Caribbean Basin. Uh, through the Caribbean Basin Security Initiative, the United States and the Caribbean have really taken great strides in unifying our approach to regional security, but we discussed ways in which we could take that further and do more. We appreciate the Jamaica government's commitment to countering narcotics trafficking and transnational criminal organizations and the cooperation that we already enjoy, but we also see many, many opportunities to enhance that cooperation to be even more effective in disrupting these uh, illegal organizations. We appreciate the government of Jamaica has made important prog progress combating the lotto scams, cooperating closely with U.S. authorities to extradite suspected lotto scammers to the United States and establishing a bilateral lotto scam task force, and we welcome that. The U.S. government will continue to support Jamaica's security forces and criminal justice system. It is in both of our countries' interest uh, to work together to investigate crimes, share intelligence, conduct asset seizures where legally and, and appropriate to do so, and bolster existing anti-corruption and anti-gang programs. In addition to our focus on regional security, as the Prime Minister indicated, we had a very comprehensive discussion on ways to promote increased energy independence not just for Jamaica, but throughout the Caribbean. And we stand ready to assist uh, with Jamaica and other partners in the Caribbean to explore and develop the resources they have, but also to share the abundance of resources that North America enjoys and the continent enjoys. Jamaica is developing new wind, solar, and gas, natural gas capabilities, all of which are going to serve the Jamaican people better. Finally, as mentioned uh, to the Prime Minister and Minister Johnson-Smith, the United States appreciates Jamaica adding its voice to
to the major issues affecting our region, and the Prime Minister just spoke very eloquently about the concern we all share regarding the situation in Venezuela. Jamaica's votes in the OAS to achieve stability, prosperity, and support democracy in Venezuela have demonstrated exceptional support for the human rights issues that confront us in the Western Hemisphere. We will continue to ask our partners to support the people of Venezuela during this very trying time for them. And we will continue, the United States will, to put pressure on the Maduro regime to return its country to free, open, and democratic elections. The people of Venezuela deserve this. So today we'll continue to work hand in hand to advance regional security cooperation, build economic partnerships. We have so much more to do together. And thank you again, Prime Minister, for the very warm welcome. Thank you so much, Secretary Tillerson and the Prime Minister. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll open the floor for some questions. Prime Minister, Secretary Tillerson, we have members of the overseas traveling media as well as our local media entities here with us. I have, uh, ag again, the rules. You raise your uh, hand, I will identify you. And then when you, the microphone is brought to you, could you please identify yourself, your media entity, and ask uh, succinctly your question to the leaders. I see a hand over there. If we could get the microphone that side, please. Ms. Chisholm, in the back. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Andrea Chisholm from Television Jamaica. Secretary Tillerson, at the United Nations, prior to the vote on Jerusalem, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. said that we are watching, and many saw that as a threat to small and developing countries. Then there are some who classify Haiti, one of our CARICOM partners, as blank hole countries. How should we perceive your visit today, and how can Caribbean countries think that you respect us, and it's not more of the United States just throwing their power around? Well, I'm here to reinforce the partnership and how we view the partnerships with Jamaica, but also with the entire Caribbean region, as I just indicated in my remarks. This is an important region to us. As we discussed today, this is the United States' third border. And Jamaica has the largest stretch of that third border with the United States. Very important to our national security, but also important to future economic opportunity as well. So the, the U.S. sees many, many opportunities for furthering cooperation on trade, for strengthening our security uh, cooperation, and most particularly for combating these transnational criminal organizations that bring nothing but problems and violence and devastation to Jamaica and the region, but also certainly to the homeland for the United States. So we seek to strengthen this, our partnerships in the region, and we see many, many opportunities to do so. And that's why we're, we're really excited about the Prime Minister assuming chairmanship of CARICOM, and it's why one of the reasons why I really wanted to meet with him today. Thank you, Secretary Tillerson. I recognize CBS. I believe you had a hand up. Could you identify yourself formally, please? Yeah, hi, Kylie Atwood with CBS News. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, I have a question for you first. Um, the U.S. is continuing to look for ways uh, to build up opposition and to economically isolate the Maduro regime in Venezuela. You've stated that you support the U.S. in those efforts today, but is Jamaica willing and able to stop importing Venezuelan, Venezuelan oil? Um, and Secretary Tillerson, a question for you. Um, how would the U.S. be able to support the Caribbean and Jamaica specifically um, if you're asking them to cut down on the amount of oil that they're importing from Jamaica? Could the U.S. provide any subsidized oil to Jamaica and these other countries? What are you thinking about as possibilities? Thank you. Uh, Jamaica supports human rights. Jamaica supports peace in this region and Jamaica wants to see the people of Venezuela uh, being able to enjoy their democracy. Um, this is a principle that has nothing to do with any other country. This has always been Jamaica's position. We wish the best for the people of Venezuela. Uh, we now don't currently uh, import oil from Venezuela. Uh, with the new dynamics in the global trade in energy and with the United States now becoming 
uh, a net export of, of um, energy resources, uh, Jamaica can, in this new paradigm, benefit from that. Well, as the Prime Minister, I think, made the point in his remarks, this is one of the things that binds Jamaica and the U.S. so closely is strong commitment to democratic values. And it's why we're just both heartbroken to see what's happening in Venezuela as we're seeing what was once a thriving democracy dismantled before our very eyes. It's the reason we intend to take all actions possible to persuade the regime to return to its full constitutional authorities return it to the to the hands of the Venezuelan people as to any future steps that the U.S. might take regarding sanctioning oil or products to put more pressure on the Maduro regime. We are going to take into full consideration the impacts on regional countries as well. And we had a good exchange mm -hmm. today regarding that issue, uh, not just for Jamaica, but also getting the prime minister's perspective on other countries, how they might be affected. And we will be looking at what our actions the U.S. might take to mitigate the negative impacts of that. So I don't want to get into specifics because we're going to, we're going to undertake a, a very quick study to see are there some things that the U.S. could easily do with our rich energy endowment, uh, with the infrastructure that we already have available, what could we do to perhaps soften any impact of that. Having said that, I think there is there's great unanimity in the region and certainly in the hemisphere that we all want to see some progress on this situation in Venezuela, which only gets worse day by day. Well, thank you, Secretary Tillerson and Prime Minister. I recognize at the back, uh, Mr. Tamba. Thank you, Edmund Tamba, Gleaner Company. Good afternoon, Secretary of State and uh, Prime Minister Holness. Uh, the UN General Assembly passed a resolution in December of last year, rejecting the American recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. But prior to that vote, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, she warned the countries not, well, to vote with the U.S. or not to vote against the U.S. or the U.S. might be withdrawing aid from such countries. Uh, Secretary Tillerson, is that a policy position of the U.S.? And Prime Minister Holness, could you just explain to us specifically why it is that Jamaica sat on the fence in that particular vote? Thank you. Well, I think President Trump actually addressed this in his State of the Union speech the other night when he said, we need to undertake a reexamination of how the United States provides aid around the world globally. And not just for this particular issue, but more broadly in terms of as we provide significant assistance to countries, are these countries that align with our values are they countries that align with what we believe are ways to make the world a safer, more prosperous place? And so I think it's in that context that I would answer your question as it's not been examined in quite some time, or if ever, in terms of how does the United States want to think about the generosity of the American people, because this is the American people's uh, money that's being provided to others, and what should the expectation be around what are we supporting? And so, as the President stated in his State of the Union address, he's asked that we consider that question. There has been no new policy adopted at this point, but he's asked us to think about all of our elements of our aid programs, and are they really advancing and promoting the values that the American people want to see advanced? Um, Edmund, Jamaica was one of several countries in the Caribbean region that abstained. Uh, from our perspective, from a diplomatic perspective, Jamaica did not need to take a position on another country's um, position on where they would want to see as a capital in the world. Um, so from our perspective, this was not an issue that Jamaica should take a position on. Uh, and, uh, Generally speaking, uh, Jamaica conducts its foreign policy on principle. Um, we are not conducting foreign policy for aid or for special benefits. So uh, I want to make that uh, position very clear to Jamaican people. 
Thank you, Prime Minister, Secretary Tillerson. And given our time issue, let's take a final question. The gentleman with the beard. Oh, that's yes. not a question. I thought we were done. <laughs> I am uh, Dave Clark from Metropolitan Press. Uh, the question's actually for Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, when uh, uh, we were with the Secretary in Mexico last week, uh, the Foreign Minister Vida Garay said that if America went ahead and uh, expelled uh, more than a million uh, so-called dreamers, that this would be a win for Mexico, a massive injection of human capital uh, and a loss for the United States because they'd be losing a lot of, uh, of, of uh, valued workers. Now, you yourself have just spoken about the large Jamaican diaspora in the United States. From your perspective, if the United States were to halt or reverse immigration from uh, Jamaica and the Caribbean, would that be a loss for the United States or would that be a loss for Jamaica? And how do you feel when the President of the United States is reported as saying he would prefer immigrants from Norway? Thank you. Well, you, you raise a very interesting question. We in Jamaica have struggled with the reverse of immigration, which is the loss of tremendous talent um, and human resource, much of which we pay for. Um, we call it the brain drain. Um, at the same time, you know, the government of Jamaica would not want to see um, people deprived of their dreams and aspirations and ambitions. But from a government perspective, we are a practical government. Um, and uh, whilst we look on um, as to what another independent country would do with their internal foreign policy, um, we stand ready to welcome all our Jamaicans and we want our diaspora to continue to support and participate in Jamaica. Uh, you mentioned an important thing, uh, Secretary Tillerson, you say America the homeland. Jamaica is the homeland for Jamaicans and uh, we would want to have their skills and their resources here uh, and we support them as well in their dreams to settle and work in other countries and we encourage them to abide by the laws and institutions of that country. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much to our visiting delegation. We hope you had a warm Jamaican time here. May we invite those who remain behind to enjoy some refreshments here. The Prime Minister will see Secretary Tillerson to his vehicle. Thank you so much for attending, ladies and gentlemen, and have a good afternoon, everybody.